What's happening, everybody? On today's show, Jaden Rashada officially asks for his release from signing with Florida. What went wrong and what's next for Billy Napier's Gators? Locked on SEC starts right now. Our Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked on SEC. It's great to have you guys along. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked on SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, let's jump into it. Plenty to discuss, and we got to start with the Florida Gators and Jaden Rashada and what exactly went wrong in this situation. Just a week after a report came out, at the five-star quarterback, Jaden Rashada, had requested a release from his national letter of intent from Florida. Well, there was a report immediately refuted by his family, saying uh, that's not true. Well, now 24-7 Sports is reporting Rashada has officially filed paperwork with the NCAA on Tuesday, asking out of his letter of intent. Florida uh, could take up to 30 days to respond. I would think it would not be a very good look for Florida to not allow him out of his letter of intent. Uh, You're talking about an effect on future recruiting and all that. You try to do damage control with the kid. You still try to get him on campus, but it doesn't seem like there is going to be a reconciliation there. He's a six foot four quarterback, the number 59 ranked recruit in this 2023 class. Uh, He was a Miami commit for nearly five months before he flipped his pledge and signed with the Gators during the early signing period in December. He was, Expected to be a mid-year enrollee. Expected to be on campus after that Under Armour All-America game last week. But as all the other early enrollees showed up on campus, he did not. And there were a lot of questions and speculation about what was happening. Well, The Athletic is reporting a $13 million NIL deal fell apart. They said sources said the recruit's family has been at odds with the football program ever since the Gator Collective terminated an NIL contract valued at more than $13 million. Now, this came on the heels of uh, his commitment to Miami back in June amid speculation of a $9 million NIL deal back then. And then in November, he flipped to Florida. So you knew something was going on here, right? If there was an NIL deal with somebody, you know, booster, collective, whatever, associated with Miami for $9 million, you knew he was getting more to go to Florida. Uh, Rashada ultimately signed with the Gators and publicly sounded enthusiastic about moving in on campus, getting to learn the Billy Napier offense and all that. But it looks like in early December, Eddie Rojas, the CEO of the Gator Collective, sent a termination letter regarding the $13 million contract, according to a program source close to the situation. There are conflicting accounts about why the deal crumbled. Did it have to do with Darren Heitner, an attorney, and all this other stuff? Uh, and who pledged to pay what? Multiple conversations ensued between donors and athletic department members. This is coming from uh, The Athletic. They said some within the administration are only now getting up to speed on what was originally promised in this deal. The program aiming to keep these third-party NIL dealings at arm's length. Keep in mind, like, the school's still not really supposed to be involved with this kind of stuff. He said uh, that yet these conversations ultimately focus on finding contingencies for keeping the class's highest profile recruit in the fold. It's just a messy, messy situation. Was something promised by an attorney or the collective and then ultimately they couldn't get the funds? Uh, There are reports that the collective came back basically with a lesser um, NIL deal, still seven figures, but that Rashada and his family were kind of like, uh, yeah, that's not what we originally agreed to. So, again, I'm sure more of the details will come out very soon. Uh, a lot of Gator fans are very defensive, saying, oh, this, you know, he, he didn't uh, he didn't ask out of his deal yet. Well, now he officially has. And, again, I think the Gators have to let him out. It would just not be a good look uh, moving forward with recruiting at Billy Napier if they – do not let him out. Now, where does this leave the Gators 
moving forward. Well, they recently picked up Wisconsin transfer quarterback Graham Mertz. They have sophomore Jack Miller returning, who didn't look all that great in the bowl game. And they have Max Brown, a 2022 signee who redshirted this past year. But Rashada was going to be that big, high-profile, big-arm talent expected to compete this spring. And, you know, let's be honest. Graham Mertz is limited. Jaden Rashada maybe could have come in and uh, and beat him out for the job from day one. Who knows? But that's not going to happen. Now, the Gators do have a commitment from an elite quarterback in 2024, DJ Lagway from the Houston area. And hopefully they can keep him in the fold and that'll, you know, take care of that. If you get through this year with Graham Mertz, Lagway will be in the year after. Um, But Rashada's departure is going to create, you know, probably some PR issues as well within the football program. And really going to shine a light on athletic departments having to deal with this NIL thing and who's agreeing to deals because it's being negotiated by a third party. School's not supposed to have a hand in it. A source familiar with the Gator Collective's dealings told the Athletic, the University of Florida football program is really one of the victims in this case. You know, they're looking back, Billy Napier company going, hey, I thought we were good. I thought we were good on this. $13 million for one player seems like a lot, but uh, if you believe reports, Nico Yamaliava over at uh, Tennessee, he got a big deal. So we'll see where Jaden Rashada ends up, but ultimately sounds like it will not be with the Florida Gators, and uh, we'll see where Florida goes this year. Losing out on one of their top recruits in this recruiting class. And again, 30 days to respond on letting him out of his letter of intent. And one other kid who was uh, on the move in the SEC quarterback-wise, Walker Howard, uh, could remain in the SEC West after all. According to a latest report from uh, Glenn Gilbo of OutKick, he reports that Howard could transfer to Ole Miss as early as this week, sources close to LSU and Ole Miss confirmed to him. Howard visited Ole Miss and TCU over the weekend, reportedly really enjoyed his visit to Ole Miss. And if he goes there, could be the immediate backup for Jackson Dart and see a little playing time, whereas he was going to be third string at LSU with Jaden Daniels coming back and Garrett Nussmeyer ahead of him on the depth chart. He was the number 42 prospect overall in the 2022 class, one of the uh, first prospects that Brian Kelly signed when he got hired at LSU was fifth best quarterback in the class and uh, we'll see where he ends up but sounding like a lot of momentum with Walker Howard ending up over at Ole Miss so we'll see if that's where he ends up all right thank you guys again for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day coming up next a uh, big name returning to the Georgia Bulldogs next year we'll tell you who that is in just a second but first need to let you know this episode is presented by friends over at BetOnline BetOnline.net your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You can get all the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there from uh, the pro football playoffs, which are going on right now, to, of course, college basketball, the NBA. They got it all up there for you over at betaline.net. They've even got some uh, sports podcasts up there as well. If you're looking for the edge in sports betting, BetOnline is the way to go. They are always your fastest and easiest way for you to get all of your sports betting information. Head on over to their website today. You can do so on your mobile device and learn more. They got all the games happening this weekend in the NFL playoffs. It has been online, and it is where the game starts. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC and we got to jump jump right into it. We got to go around the conference because we got a lot of stuff to catch up catch up on, including uh, some news out of Georgia. Here we go. Boots out to the right. Takes the handoff. Throws into the ball. What a catch! Around the conference. Lad McConkey, one of the big receiving threats, stars of that Georgia offense. He is coming back next year. He was their leading wide receiver. He officially announced Tuesday that he will return to Georgia for his redshirt junior season. And uh, we'll see if he can become a three-time national champ. 
course, Georgia winning back-to-back titles. Going to go for that chance at a three-peat. McConkey announced on his social media, one last ride with my guys, no place I would rather be. Hashtag back to work. He had 58 catches for 762 yards and seven touchdowns during this championship season. He had two touchdowns in that 65-7 win over TCU in the title game. Also had 134 rushing yards and two touchdowns this year. Uh, Signed with Georgia in the class of 2020. He's a three-star prospect coming out of high school, the number 169 overall wide receiver. But, man, he has got track speed, and Georgia loves to get him out in space and going. Uh, Stetson Bennett moving on. Conkey going to be catching passes from a new quarterback this year. Who will it be? Will it be Carson Beck, Brock Vandergriff? We'll see. And, uh, of course, Todd Munkin. Maybe going to get some interest from some NFL teams, but seems like they're expecting him to be back next year called the plays and that offense has really uh jumped into another level these last couple years with the georgia bulldogs under kirby smart so congrats to lad mcconkey coming back and expecting to be one of the big stars of the sec once again next year now some other news out of georgia uh families of devin willock and chandler Lacroix. they've set up a gofundme page for anyone wishing to support their families following a car that car accident on Sunday morning that took both of their lives, uh, Georgia's athletic department has verified those accounts. Uh, you could find the links on uh, Georgia's website, uh, and it stated that the funds will go directly to the families. But Willick and LaCroix each have their own pages. Uh, the account says, We've been overwhelmed and touched by the outpouring of love and support for the families of Devin Willock and Chandler LaCroix, as well as the other members of our Georgia athletic community. We continue to communicate with the families, provide support in a number of ways, and uh, those Go- GoFundMe accounts are a chance for uh, folks to uh, donate to uh, maybe provide a little relief to their families. Uh, in some Upbeat news, Auburn, they have set a date for their 2023 spring game. The annual A-Day showcase going to take place on April 8th. Auburn has not announced any other details yet for the game. Last season uh, kicked off in the afternoon. I think it was around a 1 o'clock kick. So we'll see if that will be the same type of thing. But Hugh Freeze, chance for him to uh, showcase this team that I'm very optimistic about. I'm, I'm bullish on Auburn being more competitive this year in year one of the Hugh Freeze era. A lot of people think, oh, it's, you know, it's going to take some time, but the way that they've uh, crushed it in the transfer portal, continue crushing it in the transfer portal, and, of course, did a pretty good job coming in and salvaging uh, the, the signing class and picking up some recruits that had committed to Brian Harson uh, or keeping them in the class. Hugh Freeze done a really good job. And uh, this will be the first opportunity to see what Hugh Freeze and his new staff are going to look like. They have uh, commitments from 12 transfers, including D. Lyman, Mosiah, Nazili, uh, Kite, I think is how you say it, and Brian Batty, the uh, running back. Got to get up to date on all the pronunciations of the new players coming in. But Auburn, uh, multiple transfers coming in. We expect that offensive line to get better. Uh, transfer class ranking top five nationally. So set your calendars April 8th, Auburn's spring day coming up. Some uh, news over at Arkansas. Sam Pittman uh, lost Dominic Bowman. He was an assistant on the defensive coaching staff this past year. Uh, according to On Three Sports, Bowman is expected to join Temple's staff as their new cornerbacks coach, so he's on the move. Uh, Isaiah Nichols, former defensive lineman at Arkansas, reported that he is going to Purdue after he entered the uh, transfer portal, finished the season with 16 tackles. And uh, some sad news over at Arkansas, as it was announced Tuesday that their beloved mascot, Tusk the Fifth passed away Sunday afternoon. He was born in 2018. According to a release from Arkansas, he died at home of natural ca- causes. Uh, Tusk Five presided over uh, as Arkansas's li- live mascot from 2019 to 2022. Within that span, Arkansas turned in two most successful years in the history of the program, including a pair of top 10 finishes in the Director's Cup, 18 combined SEC championships. His brother will take over the role of Arkansas's live mascot as Tusk the Sixth. So Tusk's brother 
uh, going to take over. R.I.P. Tusk. And there you have it. It's the latest news going on around the conference. Coming up next, we are going to touch on uh, Bill Connolly at ESPN. He ranked the best college football games of the 2022 season. We'll tell you what SEC games he had ranked high on his list. That's coming your way in just a sec. Roll along here, locked on SEC, and wanted to jump into this. Uh, ESPN's Bill Connolly he put out a piece ranking the top 100 games of the uh, best college football games of the 2022 season. A lot of it, you know, look is his opinion and there's no exact science to this but figured we'd highlight a few of the big ones that he had ranked um, particularly in his top 20 the uh coming at number 20 he had the egg bowl on there mississippi state beating ole miss 24 to 22 he said this one was fun in the present tense and heart rending in retrospect it was mike leach's last victory ole miss dominated for much of the first half but settled for field goals and a mere 16 to 7 lead, which disappeared after a 17 0 run from Leach's Bulldogs. Dayton Wade caught a 23 yard touchdown pass from Jackson Dart with 85 seconds left to get the Rebels to within two. But one last goal line failure from Ole Miss, an incomplete two point conversion attempt, gave Mike Leach's Bulldogs the Egg Bowl win. So that was number 20 on his top games of the season. Coming in at number 13, it was Alabama beating Texas back in September. It's got this one ranked number 13th. It says, neither team ended up living up to hope or expectations in 2022, but this week two matchup was an event of the highest order. In front of 105,000 fans in Austin, Texas gave up an early 81-yard touchdown to Jace McClellan and lost a red-hot Quinn Ewers to injury, but still took a 16-10 lead early in the fourth quarter. When Jameer Gibbs got the lead back for the Tide, Texas nailed a 49-yard field goal with 129 left to make it 19-17. Bama was out of sorts, but they still had Bryce Young, who completed five passes, escaped pressure multiple times, and ripped off a 20-yard run to set up Will Reichard's 33-yard game winner, and Alabama won it 20-19. That was his 13th best game of the season. Coming in at number 11, it was Appalachian State beating Texas A&M 17-14. App State settled for a 29-yard field goal to take a 17-14 lead with about eight minutes to go. Aggies had a chance to tie it with about three and a half minutes to go, but a 47-yard field goal attempt was short. App State went to the college station, got their million-dollar check, and walked out with their chest held high as they knocked off the number six-ranked Aggies at the time. Of course, we know what happened after that to the Aggies. They just had a downward spiral of a season. Coming at number, by the way, he's only got four games involving SEC teams in his top 10. But let's jump into some of the top 10 games he has. Coming at number five, it was Arkansas's 55-53 win over Kansas in the Liberty Bowl. With a minute 23 to go, Kansas was down 15, faced a second and 29 from Arkansas's 40. And they rallied in the second overtime. Arkansas scored quickly, converted the two pointer. Kansas responded and after a controversial targeting penalty on the first two point attempt, converted to send the game to another overtime in the third OT. KJ Jefferson completed a scoring pass to Rashad DeBinion, but Kansas backup quarterback Jason Bean overshot an open receiver on trick play. And Arkansas won just like that 55 to 53. One of the thrilling games of the bowl season. Coming in at number four on this list, it was LSU beating Alabama 32 to 31. Jaden Daniels ran for 25 yard touchdown in overtime and found Mason Taylor for a do or die two point conversion. And 15th ranked LSU seized control of the SEC West race with a 32 31 win over number six Alabama. Brian Kelly said after the game, I'd never beaten Alabama. I was emotional, not just for myself, but for my team, because I know what we look like in January to see where we are today. It's pretty emotional. A jubilant LSU fan stormed the field 
as the Tigers triumphed in a riveting game that sent LSU to Atlanta and winning the SEC West over Alabama. Coming in at number three on this list, he's got the Tennessee win over Alabama, 52-49. to 49. Sorry, Bama fans. A couple of Bama losses coming in here in the top ten. But this was back on October 15th. As Bill Connolly writes, it's always news when Nick Saban and Alabama lose, and when they lose games like this, they become Game of the Year candidates. Tennessee beating Alabama on a last-second field goal, and they won 52-49. to Balls led 28-10 to in the second quarter. Bama charged back to lead twice. Jalen Hyatt's fifth touchdown catch of the day. Tied the game at 49. Bama responded by setting up a 50-yard field goal attempt for Reichert. He missed with 15 seconds left. Hendon Hooker completed two quick passes, and Chase McGrath narrowly cleared the crossbar with a 40-yard field goal down with the goalposts, and it was pure ecstasy in Knoxville that night into the early morning hours. And the last SEC game he had on this list, number two, the number two game of the season, he has Georgia 42, Ohio State 41 in the national semifinal. Georgia remained undefeated because the Bulldogs never gave up a rallying from two touchdown deficits in each half for a thrilling semifinal win over Ohio State. Stetson Bennett capped number one Georgia's final comeback with a 10-yard uh, last-minute scoring pass to Adani Mitchell for the Peach Bowl victory over number four Ohio State to win. Sent the Bulldogs to the national title game. The number two best game of the year. And number one on this list, he had T- TCU Michigan. I think it was a good game, but I would have put Georgia Ohio State over TCU Michigan. I don't know why, what metric he had putting TCU Michigan at number one, but he had TCU Michigan as the best game of the year in all of college football. I'll agree to disagree. Georgia Ohio State was was a thrilling one. I'd watch that one again right now. Fire up the replay. Let's watch it. And there you have it. That's uh, ESPN's list. If you are so inclined, go check it out, ESPN.com. Uh, Bill Connolly ranking the, his top 100 games of the college football season and a number of SEC games coming in there. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. Thank you guys again for making us your first listen every day. Make sure to check out the brand new podcast on our network, Locked on College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college hoops, all in one place. They're from some big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. That's going to do it for me, Chris Gordy. It's been Locked on SEC. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow right here on Locked on SEC.